He's a four-time Defensive Player of the Year, an NBA Hall of Famer, and the owner of the most famous ton in NBA history. Here's the career retrospective of Dikembe Mutombo, where we'll try to answer how good was he actually, what made him special, and how does he compare with the best shot blockers in the NBA today? Early Life and Road to the NBA in 1966, eight years before it hosted the famous Rumble in the Jungle between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, the city of Kinshasa and Zaire welcomed a child by the name of Dikembe Mutombo Mpulando Makamba Jean-Jacques Wamatumbo. As fate would have it, his limbs would grow as long as his name, but young Dikembe had a very unlikely path to the NBA. No, he wasn't poor, scrambling to put food on the table and working from an early age like Giannis Antetokounmpo, for example. Mutombo's parents were a part of the upper class. His father stepped studied in France and became a high school principal when he returned to Zaire, which is now the Democratic Republic of Congo. Young Dikembe liked to study as well, and he always wanted to learn new things, a part of the reason why he speaks seven different languages today. When he was a freshman in high school, he was already a seven-footer, and just like Hakim Olajuwon, Dikembe started playing football as a goalkeeper due to his incredible 7'6 wingspan. He also practiced martial arts, and he only took up basketball at the age of 16, after his father repeatedly pushed him towards it, realizing that his son had the biggest natural advantage in that sport. Matumbo wanted to become a doctor, but eventually, he realized his ample opportunity in basketball. So he moved to the States and joined Georgetown University in 1987 at the age of 21. At first, his biggest task was learning English, which he didn't speak at all. As a sophomore, he played as a reserve behind Alonzo Mourning, and he immediately proved to be one of the best shot blockers in the NCAA, averaging over two blocks in just 11 minutes per game. The next year, coach John Thompson started playing with Matumbo and Mourning in a two-center lineup, and the two big guys formed an infamous rejection row under the basket. In three years of college basketball, Atumbo averaged 10 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 blocks per game in just over 23 minutes on the court. Even though he was already 25 years old, he was a hot topic before the 1991 NBA draft due to his 7-foot, 2-inch height, excellent mobility, and defensive instincts. Despite a limited offensive game, the Denver Nuggets decided to take him with the fourth overall pick. Mount Matumbo in the Rocky Mountains when he came to the NBA, Dikembe already looked like a veteran physically. Both by his facial structure and physical strength, Matumbo wasn't your regular rookie, and he immediately left an impact. Averaging 16.6 .6 points, 12.3 rebounds, and three blocks per game, Matumbo was one of the rare first-year players that got selected in the All-Star game, and he finished second in the Rookie of the Year voting behind Larry Johnson. Despite his defensive presence and the fact that Denver had three other top five picks on the roster, in Mahmoud abdul -Rahim, Reggie Williams, and LaFonso Ellis, the Nuggets weren't a formidable team, missing the playoffs in 1992 and 93. In 1994, they finally squeezed into the playoffs as an eight seed and had to play the Seattle Supersonics, who had the best record in the entire league. Nobody gave them much chance in the series, but the Nuggets pushed the Sonics to the deciding Game 5, where Dikembe made the game-winning jumper for the Nuggets, but it was after the buzzer sounded, so the game went to overtime. In OT, the Nuggets kept fighting and managed to pull the biggest upset in NBA history at the time, becoming the first ever eight seed to defeat the number one seed. The image of Matumbo clutching the basketball after he caught the final rebound of the game as the Nuggets closed out game five on Seattle's home floor remains as one of the most iconic in NBA playoffs history. It's worth noting that Dikembe averaged more than six blocks per game in that series. Sadly for Denver, luck wasn't on their side in the next round as they lost to the Jazz in seven games. In 1995, Matumbo was an all-star again, and he led the league in blocked shots, which earned him his first Defensive Player of the Year award. However, the Nuggets were swept in the first round of the playoffs and would miss the postseason altogether next year, just when Dikembe was a free agent. Matumbo was not satisfied with the team's direction, but he still asked for a 10-year extension. Denver ownership kept searching for alternatives because Matumbo wanted to stay, but they didn't want to give him such a long deal. Matumbo bolted for Atlanta, and then Nuggets general manager Bernie Bickerstaff called it the biggest regret of his career. Continued defensive dominance. Dikembe came to the Hawks in 1996 as a free agent, joining an experienced team led by Steve Smith, Mookie Blaylock, and Christian Leitner. Dikembe helped the Hawks win 10 more games than the season before, and he won his second Defensive Player of the Year award after he led the league in total blocks and rebounds. However, the Hawks fell to the eventual champion Chicago Bulls in the second round. In 1998, Dikembe repeated as the Defensive Player of the Year, winning his third one in just seven NBA seasons. Despite winning 50 games 
games again, the Hawks fell in the first round of the playoffs to the Hornets. After Michael Jordan retired, the East was wide open, and Atlanta had its best chance to advance to the finals. The Hawks allowed the fewest points in the league because of Dikembe, but the offense wasn't up to par, and they failed in the playoffs again, getting swept by the Knicks in the second round. After that loss, the ownership decided to reshuffle, trading Steve Smith and Blaylock before the 2000 season. However, it didn't yield great results, and Atlanta couldn't even make the playoffs. In 2001, the Hawks started the season slowly. Dikembe wasn't getting any younger, and he did not want to miss the playoffs again. So at the trade deadline, he was sent to the Philadelphia 76ers in a blockbuster deal for Theo Ratliff, Tony Kukoc, and Nazar Muhammad. Dikembe was the defensive presence that the Sixers needed, and he proved to be the key missing ingredient for the Allen Iverson-led team. Mount Matumbo was absolutely brilliant that whole year, in what might have been his best season as a pro. He was an all-star, he led the NBA in rebounding, and won his fourth Defensive Player of the Year award, becoming the first and only player with four defensive titles, an honor he would later share with Ben Wallace. The 76ers had the best record in the East, and would justify their favorite status by going to the finals after two spectacular seven-game series against the Raptors and the Bucks. In Game 7 against the Bucks, Matumbo scored 23 points, grabbed 19 rebounds, and blocked seven shots to win the series. In his first NBA Finals, the Sixers were a heavy underdog against Shaq, Kobe, and the defending champions LA Lakers. After pulling off an upset and winning Game 1 with 48 points from Iverson, the Sixers lost the next four games and the series. Matched up against Shaq, Matumbo averaged 17 points, 12 rebounds, and 2.2 blocks, which was more than good, but O'Neal was absolutely unstoppable during that time, and there was nothing more to Dikembe could have done. Next season, Dikembe notched his eighth and final All-Star appearance at the age of 35, but the Sixers lost their stride and got eliminated in the first round of the playoffs. Another finals appearance and the final years. After they lost the 2002 NBA Finals, the New Jersey Nets looked at reinforcement at the center to battle the likes of Shaq and Tim Duncan in the Western Conference, so they traded for Dikembe. But Matumbo spent most of that season with a nagging injury that limited him to just 24 games. He was generally unable to play in the playoffs, typically serving as a sixth man during the Nets' second consecutive finals run, where they would lose to the Spurs in six games. Next year, Matumbo got traded to the Knicks, where he proved that father time is undefeated because his numbers plummeted across the board. He got traded to the Rockets in the following season, where he would surprisingly stay for the next five years as a backup for Yao Ming. Even though he wasn't as mobile as before, Dikembe was still 7'2", with long arms, and could offer a positive defensive impact in limited minutes. He still had flashes of greatness, like in 2007, where he had 22 rebounds at the age of 40, becoming the oldest player in NBA history to record more than 20 rebounds in a game. But after he got injured in the 2000s, 2009 playoffs, Dikembe Mutombo finally said farewell to basketball at the age of 42. Legacy as a player, Matumbo was most famous for his trademark finger wag, which he would happily showcase after almost every blocked shot. He was finger wagging a lot, considering he blocked 3,289 shots in his career, which is the second best mark ever behind only Hakeem Olajuwon. Dikembe played in the golden era of NBA centers, but the toughest competition, Shaq, David Robinson, Ewing, and Hakeem all ruled supreme in the 90s. Even though Dikembe wasn't in the same conversation as them on the offensive end, it's largely because because he started playing basketball late in life, and he'd instead concentrate on defense rather than offense. Dikembe was very efficient from the field and from the free throw line, and if he wanted to, he could have taken more shots by himself, especially considering that his most productive offensive year was in his rookie season. But Dikembe was the ultimate team player, and he wasn't interested in scoring a lot, because he was arguably the best defensive center of his era outside of maybe Olajuwon. When Dikembe blocked shots, he did it to keep the ball in bounds, and try to save a possession for his team, and his 2001 season is still the best mark for most efficient shot-blocking season ever because his team gained possession on nearly 70% of his rejections. Matumbo definitely benefited from the absence of a defensive three-second rule, which was instituted after the 2001 season. Before the rule change, he could stay parked in the paint the entire time, waiting for opponents' drives to the basket. Because of the three-second rule, and 50% of all shots being three-pointers, current centers like Rudy Gobert can never block 
block as many shots as the 90s big man. Still, it's undeniable that Matumbo was one of the best defensive centers ever, and his shot-blocking prowess and finger wag made him into one of the most popular players of the 90s and early 2000s. Matumbo used his popularity to become a great humanitarian, and he raised and donated millions of dollars for those in need, especially in Africa and his native Congo.